incidents and then seeing how they respond and react to them. And then if the CIA was stage managing the experience, it would allow them to gauge how, how effective and or how the incident or the event changes the person. And that would give them a good idea of how it might also affect people on a worldwide level if there were genuine incidents. So it was almost like staging an incident to to gauge the reaction of the population or or a single person mm. before the aliens actually land. You know, give them a sort of preemptive understanding of what might occur. But also, I mean, you look at people like Angelucci. There were a lot of rumours surrounding him that um, you know was he being encouraged to to spread like communist and socialist ideas. And I also think the CIA had concerns about that and they watched the contactees for that reason. You know, were they kind of like undercover Soviet moles or something trying to spread communism again under the, like a, a UFO motif? So I think there's probably several things going on with the CIA. And unfortunately, you know, 60 years later, I'm not sure we'll ever fully get the, you know, the complete picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, if you look back on it, uh, you look at the way great leaders like, say, Constantine took over the state. Obviously, didn't have a strong enough army, didn't have a, a good enough governmental philosophy, was rather you know, self-centered, didn't really have a theme to guide his people. But Christianity seemed like the, the, the dope of the day, and it was really nice to have the threat of eternal damnation to kind of keep people in line. Perhaps there was a new game in town. It was the new alien game. And maybe if the aliens, you know, could uh, gain at least a national or international belief system that if you don't do this or if you do this, you're going to gain favor of the aliens and that maybe this was going to replace God or replace the church yeah. as as the thing to which people put their faith in and that maybe the whole belief in God might tumble uh, because obviously if there were other intelligent races on other worlds who, for instance, weren't Christian, uh, that might uh, put a small fly in the ointment, as it were, to uh, to keeping people in line. Well, listen, I don't have to listen to you, priest. Uh, the aliens are going to take care of everything, and uh, there's going to be no eternal damnation here. I could see where that would be rather upsetting to the to the status quo. Yeah, you're, you're quite right. That is one of the things that sort of sets the contact team movement apart from just somebody who said they've seen a UFO, or even largely people who claim to have been abducted. The contact team movement was more like a, a modern-day religion. Um, and, you know, you can actually draw parallels between a lot of contactee experiences and an ancient religion, particularly Christianity. Uh, for example, you know, George Adamski goes out into the desert, a UFO comes down, and an alien tells him this is how the human race should live. Moses goes up into the mountains and gets the Ten Commandments, which tell people how to live. You know, it, it's, it both involves a message from higher beings, but instead, of, and as we've you know, the story of, of God and the Ten Commandments. God didn't make some massive showing all around the world. He came down to one man on the mountains and gave him the Ten Commandments, which is very contactee-like, if you see what I mean. Mm, it's, right. You know, a higher intelligence, not it's not approaching the world on a worldwide scale, but having one man or two people or whatever going out and spreading the word. And I think there was this concern with the contactee movement that it would mutate into like a, a modern-day religion where... God's demons, heaven and hell, <clears throat> excuse me, heaven and hell would be replaced by aliens and this planet and that star system. Um, and again, I think probably, although we can never prove this, I, I would be very surprised if there weren't studies undertaken that would look, that probably looked into the way in which society, from a religious perspective, could be changed had these contact e cults really grown you know, on a, on a truly massive scale. Mm. And I think there probably was a concern that, okay, we're not going to be able to destroy them or get rid of them because people notice, but we can perhaps try and diffuse the interest to where they become just a quirky little thing in one city or whatever, and they don't, you know, spread here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> I like it. Well, that's a good place to take a break. We'll take a quick uh, four-minute break, and we'll be back with more Nick Redfern, right after this. Just take a break, relax a little bit. We'll be back in about four minutes. Mm -hmm. 